Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another video for Infinite Lagrange. This video is sponsored by NetEase, and I hope you folks are enjoying this game half as much as I am. Now, in today's video, we're going to be looking at how to unlock new ships and how to upgrade your ships. I am assuming that you've already watched my video on how to understand different ship statistics. If you haven't, I'll put a link in the description down below. Um, I do recommend going and watching that one first, as I will be referencing back towards it. Um, that said, if you have watched it, let's jump right into talking about how to unlock new ships and how to upgrade them. First things first then, how do you unlock new ships? Well, this is done through the research button here at the bottom right of the expanse screen. If you're in the base view, you are going to need to come back out to the expanse, then tap on research. And ultimately, you've got all of these different crates that you can then put into research, and those will allow you to, as a chance, unlock certain blueprints. So first things first, how do we get these crates? Well, there are two different ways, and the first one I'll touch upon briefly is the Dawn Funding Scheme. This is an incredible way of getting stuff, and if you are willing to drop a few dollars into the game, then certainly purchasing the full Dawn funding scheme is by far the best way to go. Basically, as you do things in the game, as you spend action points and blow up ships, you will increase along this battle pass, so to speak. And you should see that there are a lot of these different black market tech file crates, and we'll talk about those more in just a moment. Ultimately, they are going to be a key way for you to unlock new ships. If we have a look at the Dawn Financial Plan as well, this is also another really interesting one. You can spend essentially, I think it's 600 or 1000 Proxima, and you get a massive return day in, day out. Every day you log in, you'll get a free amount of Proxima, and it does multiply out your Proxima. This is also a fantastic thing to do um, if you have some spare Proxima. Grab this ASAP, because it will then help keep those black market chests um, coming day in, day out. Beyond this, though, if we go into the store, you'll see that you can purchase these directly. Every day, you get one Black Market Tech File Crate for 150 Proxima. Any one after that is going to cost you the full 300. You can also buy a 3-in-1, which is basically, as the name suggests, it's one crate that contains all of the contents of three Black Market uh, Tech File Crates. For 888. I do recommend trying to grab the 151 every day, and that's where the Dawn funding scheme comes in real handy, because you're going to get those free coins, those free Proxima coins as part of that, and use them to buy those black market crates. Beyond that, every day as well, you'll have the generic BP files here. Two of these will be dropped into the game. They cost 10,000 EU coins a piece, and you get the opportunity to buy two of these a day. Now, what do these contain? Well, if we tap on the little sort of question mark here at the bottom, you'll see that in these ones, we get the options of things like the FG300 BP, the A7, uh, AC721 Destroyer, the CASO 66, the C KCCPV 2.0, uh, and the ST59 and CV3000. You also have the SC002 Fighter, the CVMO11, and the CVII003 Corvettes. And these are not easy names to say, I'm just going to add. You'll also get a whole ton of the weapon tech blueprints as well. We'll talk about those later on as those are about upgrading your blueprints. But if you're interested in any of these, these are the kind of things you may find in those blueprints. Um, the, the generic ships, they can be really, really useful though. Don't just think, oh, it's generic, it's not worth it. They really are. Some of those ships like the ST-59 and the Casso 66 are incredibly powerful tanking ships later on in the game. Um, the CV-3000 as well is, one of the, is a really useful carrier to have as you start getting toward the end game. Well worth training into, plus you're going to need a whole ton of those weapon tech blueprints. If we go up there and have a look at the black market tech files, you'll see that these do have more options in them. They're not the generic BPs, you're not going to get an FG300 out of these. You may not get anything, it's worth noting that these are all a chance of getting a blueprint. But here you can see there are some really awesome blueprints in the frigate side of things. I'm still really looking forward to getting either a Xeno Stinger, a Ruby, and um, certainly the Carillion, the uh, secondary version of that, the uh, the heavy cannon version, I really want to get one of those. The Ma uh, Mare Tranquillitatis, I managed to get the Pulse Cannon on one of those the other days and was super happy. You can get any of the destroyers here. I would love to get the Tundra or the Guardian to have some healing capability on my fleets, um, but the Taurus, yeah, I've got that one, excellent Pulse Cannon one. Winged Hussar is one of my favourite ships in the game, alongside the Reliat. Cruisers, again, you can see all the different options here. Um, Spear of Uranus and the other battle cruisers, the Carriers, various different fighters, various different Corvettes. There's a whole load of different stuff you can get here, and again, you will get weapon tech. And I'm going to show you how one of these works. I'm going to buy one of these now and drop that in to talk about how this works. Now, please also remember, just notice here, 
we have the ship and aircraft BP files. These cost 15 research points. We'll talk about that more in a moment. Again, these have got a really nice spread of different blueprints that you can find. The difference between these and the black market tech files is that these are guaranteed to give you a blueprint of some kind. So saving up those research points is really going to help. Anyway, here we are back on the research screen. I'm going to grab that black market tech file box that we've just brought and we're going to pop it here into our research branch. So over it goes and we're hoping for a blue flash. No, we only get a white flash. The blue flash would mean that there was a blueprint in here for a ship. As it stands though, this is still a pretty nice one. I'm actually quite impressed with this one. So starting off, we've got a whole ton here of different weapon tech. So the high-speed missile tech, let's research that and grab it. And um, we've got the Antonius Standard Gamma Storm Plasma Missile Tech, which is an R5 version, Rarity 5, basic pulse cannon tech, and a load of other stuff here as well that I'm just going to literally grab nice and quickly because there is no research time on any of these at all. There we are. Sorry, I thought my fat thumb had missed that one for a moment. And then finally here we have research points. Now remember I just said that there are those crates there that have a 100% guaranteed blueprint chance. This is how you get them. I've now got two more points, which takes me from nine points up to 11 points. In a couple more days with a couple more of these blueprint boxes, hopefully I'll have enough to get a guaranteed blueprint. And yes, sometimes it is for a ship that you have already found, at which point you will have a 20% chance of unlocking that particular ship. And when it says 20% chance, if you fail that chance, it increases your percentage. It's 20% every time, but the fifth time you find that blueprint, you are guaranteed to unlock it. That will make more sense when you actually see it. Um, but essentially, as an example, um, again, I have the Mare Tranquillitatis as a standard frigate. I then found another Mare Tranquillitatis blueprint in one of these crates when I tried to train it. I got 100% success, bam, I got the 20% uh, luck chance there. It gave me the full blueprint in one go, giving me the pulse cannon Mare Tranquillitatis. On the other hand, more recently, I found a Reliat blueprint again. I've already got the, uh, not Reliat, sorry, a, uh, a Carillion. Carillion blueprint. I already had the recon Carillion. Um, I then unlocked this one, hoping to get the heavy cannon. It failed the 20%, um, which means it's the first fail. If I find that again, um, I've got a 20% chance of it succeeding, and if it fails again, I'll have another 20% chance. The fifth time I find it, I am guaranteed to get that blueprint. Otherwise, though, you get things like the Battle Cruiser tech points here. I've only got the Spear of Uranus unlocked, so we're going to drag that one in there and start training that. Now, you can rush this with Proxima, but to me, that's just not a good idea. And that's a tech point, and we'll talk more about tech points later on. Now, if I didn't have any battle cruisers, it would just give me a generic battle cruiser tech point that I can apply to a blueprint later, and we'll talk about that more in regards to upgrading. So there, that's how you get the new crates, and with those crates, how you get blueprints. I should also note that in the store, at the top, just under Black Market Tech Files, when you first start out, there is another type of uh, chest there um, that is 799 Proxima, I believe. Um, you get like three or five of these that you're allowed to buy. They are 100% guaranteed to be a blueprint, and again, it's like Mare Tranquillitatis, um, the Reliat, the Winged Hussar, and a couple of others. Those are well worth getting. The Reliat is actually the ship we're going to look about upgrading in a moment. The Winged Hussar is one of my favourite destroyers. Those are two of my favourite ships in this entire game, which if you followed me from Eve, Eve Echoes, shouldn't surprise you at all that my favourite ships in the entire game are frigates and destroyers. Anyway, so you've unlocked a load of these blueprints. How do you now actually upgrade those ships? Well, we come into blueprints, we go into ship blueprint, and then you find the particular ship that you want to upgrade. Now, in this case, I'm going to showcase this with my favourite little frigate, the Reliat. Now, to talk about things here first of all, let's start at the top left and work our way around the screen. So at the top left, we have the name of the ship, Reliat Rapid Torpedo Frigate. We then have its blueprint number, its tech points, its version number. Beneath all of that, we have the actual blueprint itself that we can start modifying, and then at the bottom of the screen, we have the various statistics. Now, if you've already watched my video on what ship stats mean, all of that will be completely making sense to you, and we'll talk about this briefly in this video um, as we go. We'll point out bits of it, but again, if you haven't watched the video on how ship stats work and what they mean, pause this video now, go watch that one, come back, I'll wait. 
Now, to start things off here, though, let's go back up to the top left, that main version number. This blueprint number does actually mean something. The first number in grey there is essentially, it's the number of variants of this ship type that you have discovered. So here for the Reliat, you can see I've only got the anti-ship type. It's the only one there, so that number is a 1. If I were to come out and go across to the FG300, however, you'll see that number is a 3, and it's gold. The fact that it is gold shows that I have found all of the different variants possible for that blueprint. So for the FG300, you have the multi-roll type, the armoured type, and the recon type. And once you have found all three of those, that's it. That's all three types found. This means that here for the Reliat, there is another type of Reliat that I have not yet discovered. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it, there's just two, if there's three. There may even be four. As far as I'm aware, most of them have two or three variants. And I don't know of any ship that has four, but I could be wrong. So, we then have the second number, the 1.10. The 1.10 here, in this case the 10, that sort of those two second digits, are the amount of tech points researched using crates, not with levels. So you've just seen me put a new, blue, a, a new tech point onto the Spear of Uranus. That is where that number 10 here would come in. So the Spear of Uranus would have gone from 1.00 to 1.01 .01 when I did that. That is just how many tech points you have researched into the ship, not via levels. The underscore 12 here, that is the level of the ship, remembering that this starts at zero. So once a ship has leveled up once, that would be one point whatever underscore one, then one point whatever underscore two, and so on. This means here, I have leveled up this particular ship 12 times. It's now a level 13 ship, and 10 tech points have been assigned courtesy of me using the research crates. As we move further right then, beyond the tech points, where it says anti-ship type, just above this you will see V1.00, triangular brackets, 01. That V.100 is the amount of tech points that have been spent on this variant. You can see I've got 22 tech points unassigned. As I start assigning those, that V.100 will start to change. The 01 is how many of the weapon systems we have maxed out on this particular ship, and we'll be talking about that one in a brief moment. So just to reiterate, the leftmost number, that 1, is how many variants you have discovered, and if it's gold, you have successfully found them all. The 1.10 means that I have used 10 research crates to upgrade uh, tech points there. I've learnt those through there. The other 12 there is how many times the ship itself has leveled up, so 10 research tech points plus 12 level ups gives me 22 unassigned tech points, because I haven't put them in yet. Then the V1.00 is how many tech points I have spent, I've actually allocated into the ship to enhance it, and then the 01 is how many weapon systems I have maxed out. And we're going to start off by then talking about how to max out those weapon systems. If we go into the anti uh, the anti ship torpedo system here, you'll see the C two two four zero A Roland Ion Dwarf K whatever cluster torpedo. Big long names for these, and you can either tap on the box here and then go to module adjustment, or you can just tap on the icon with the chevron to the side here. This will then allow you to upgrade this blueprint. I will show how this works in just a second. The point to note here is this is maxed out at 30%. I've already successfully finished this one. That is why the Reliat blueprint has that 01 at the top there above anti-ship type. If we were to look at the rapid fire battery system and go into the generic cannon, here you'll see that this one I have not maxed out. It's still showing 6% there. Um, we can show a case how this works. This is where those blueprints, the weapon tech blueprints, come in handy. Now it says here, requires cannon tech or EM tech of R1 and above. R1 is the rarity, it starts at R1, it maxes out at R5. The higher the rarity is, the more likely that tech blueprint is to assist in upgrading your blueprint. So here, if I tap on that precision cannon tech, you'll see at the bottom my 35% success rate goes up by 2% courtesy of the fact that this is a rarity 2 tech and if I tap on confirm I have that 35.2% chance of getting through that blueprint I'm successful huzzah I get an additional 6% damage there which now when we come out you'll see that has gone to 6% on the slide and if I try again with the other one because I only need one of these at a time it's a 30 point uh, plus 2% chance 32% and amazingly 
I was successful again, which has given me now an additional 6%, so the anti-ship attack here from this cannon has gone up by 12% there, which means now the stats here at the bottom left where it says rapid fire battery system have now changed. Now you'll notice as well that this is slightly different in appearance from when I recorded that uh, what the ship points all mean. That's because we've just had an update about how enhancements actually work. So let's talk about enhancements next of all. When we come back to the center screen here, you'll see that we have all the stuff in the center of the screen, the different bits that we can modify and enhance with those tech points. You can see we have the rapid fire battery system, it's got three little notches under it. The armor system has two notches under it, the propulsion system has two notches under it. The command system, however, has no notches, nor does the energy system. Finally, then you have the anti-ship torpedo system with, what's that, six notches under it? We're going to tap into that one, because this is the main weapon. And I think if you're using a Reliat, you want to have additional punch to it. Now at the bottom right here we have the enhance system. If you tap on this, it brings up this really cool new interface. It shows you here all of your different enhancements that you can apply to the ship. And you can do these either one at a time, you can see here two tech points to enhance it once, or ten tech points to enhance it all the way to maximum. And it will also show you on the left hand side what that does. So here for the Reliat, you'll see that the first one here increase all missile torpedo damage by 2%. That would take, for example, my anti-ship firepower from 3640 to an additional 72. If I go further across to the right, however, we've got a loading mechanism upgrade which decreases the weapon system cooldown by 3%, so it fires more frequently. That gives me a 74 increase. So you can see there, 72 and 74. Those two tech points, I would argue, are going to be more effective here in the loading mechanism upgrade than they would be in the warhead modification. There are others as well, though. You can have like the guidance system enhancement, which increases the hit rate. Obviously, you can have all the damage in the world, but if you can't hit your target, you may as well have none. You have uh, the way to increase the armor of that weapon system so that the weapon system is less likely to be destroyed. You can change it so that the siege ammo is enhanced so it does more damage in sieges. We can even go to a full-on strategy here. When the target is a frigate, it increases the number of bomblets by 2 and decreases the damage of single bomblets by 15% for cluster bombs. Basically, this means that the Reliat becomes a dedicated anti-frigate ship and it gets a magnificent firepower boost against those, but it comes at the cost of 15 tech points. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to put 10 tech points into the loading mechanism upgrade because that full 74 is pretty nice and there we are, it's all gone up there, it's not just the 74, it's that 74 was just the 2%, it's now gone up by the full 15% there. You'll see that this does go up in uh, level as well, so if we do this now one by one, you'll see here the first one, decrease weapon system by 3%, we go for 2 points there. Decrease weapon system by 2-3% and you can see there it's upgrading it one at a time and that number is going up showcasing how many tech points we've actually spent on this particular blueprint. There we are, so we've now spent 18 tech points and now we've spent 20 tech points on this. We've still got two left though, so let's have a look. The increase all missile torpedo damage is still pretty nice. Now it's 2%. It's gone up from that 71 from earlier. It's now 91. That's obviously because 2% of a bigger number is a bigger number. So we're going to hit enhance on that. And there we go. That's a slight change from how the system used to be beforehand. You used to just have basically the enhance all. Now you can do it in these little steps so you don't have to wait until you've got 9 or 10 or 11 or however many tech points to actually get an upgrade. Every time your ship levels up, there's a chance that it actually is going to be useful somewhere. Now, of course, it's not just the weapon systems that have these. As we had a look, we can go into the propulsion system. You can see here, we can upgrade this as well, increase the cruising speed or the warp speed. If you want to be moving between areas a little bit faster, you might decide that here the Reliat at 800 isn't fast enough. If the rest of your fleet is moving at 900, for example, you don't want the Reliat slowing down the entire fee, uh, fleet, you might upgrade the propulsion system. If your Reliats are taking a lot of damage, you may upgrade the armor, armor system here with kernel structure enhancements, arm, advanced armor coating, short range stealth coating, things like this. And there's all kinds of different options there that you can go for. Now, of course, you've seen that we can level up and the, we can earn tech points for enhancement through blueprint research. As you send ships into combat, you can also earn experience and they will level up there. Um, once they hit level 30, they stop earning experience from other NPC fleets, which is well worth noting. It sometimes is worth holding off and just letting your ships level up naturally to level 30, then spending all of like your tech points and your uh, your well, spending your experience chips in a moment, which we're going to talk about um, at that point. Wait until it's hit level 30, then 
start spending the EXP chips. So what are experience chips? Well, these are things that you'll have earned in combat against NPC fleets or as quest rewards and things like that. Just above where it says enhance, in the bottom right of the screen, there's a little AV plus kind of symbol. And if we tap on that, it brings us up to the battle EXP collector menu. This, you can see the amount of experience that this particular ship has acquired. In this case, 2,886 out of a 13,500 required to hit level 13. And as I go into combat, that will go up further and further there until it hits level 13. Once it hits level 13, that will reset and there'll be another amount to get to level 14, which will be probably more than 13,500. Um, and you'll have earned a tech point. Every time you level up, you earn one tech point. And again, remember that you can only earn EXP from fighting NPC fleets up to level 30. After level 30, you need to use these combat microchips. And combat microchips come in three sizes and two, well, and multiple flavors. The sizes are, of course, small, medium, and large. You can see here I've got a combat microchip medium and a combat microchip small. You then also get combat microchips for frigates, destroyers, cruisers, and obviously those can only be used on the individual blueprint type that they are named for. You can't use cruiser microchips on frigates, for example, and vice versa. Those again come in small, medium, and large varieties. The small obviously are much more frequent. The medium are sort of, you know, fairly rare. The large ones are sufficiently rare that you tend to hold on to them until you really need them. So let's look at what these actually do. So you see I'm on 2,886 experience so far. If I were to use a single combat microchip, it's going to give me another 5,500, which pushes me to there. And if I use two of these, oh, there's that tech point. What about if I were to take those off using the minus? What, how does that compare to a combat microchip? Well, that's already 1,500, which is significantly more and takes me straight in. So I'm actually going to confirm and use that. Now, obviously, I do recommend using the ones that are tied to a ship type first. I've used the generic one there, but the ship type ones are just a little, you know, they're, they're more specific. So they're probably better to use first. Or at least that's what I find. So there we are. We've leveled it up twice. We have two more tech points. If we go back into our anti-ship torpedo system, you can see we can enhance that up one more time there. We get the I have going from 1.22 to 1.24 because we've applied two more tech points to the ship. And there we have it. That is now a nicely upgraded Reliat. And I too strongly recommend upgrading the Reliat. I love this ship so much. And if you have a look through its stats, I'm sure you can appreciate why I enjoy this ship. But there we go. That's pretty much everything I need to talk about in regards to how to unlock new ships and how to upgrade the ones you have. In a future video, we will talk a little bit more about the stats and how to upgrade mining ships. I'll do that all in one video because there's a little less to cover there. We're not going to cover it here. Just note that combat ships can't be used on miners, which makes sense. They're not combat ships, so they shouldn't get combat experience. But this kind of works the same for all ships up to and including cruiser levels. Once you hit battle cruiser and above, um, there's a bit more uh, sort of intensiveness to how blueprints work. We'll cover that in a future video on its own. But even if you're looking at destroyers like, say, the Winged Hussar, you'll see the way that this works is exactly the same as it was there for the Reliat. So there we have it, everything you need to know about unlocking and upgrading your ships in Infinite Lagrange. Well worth knowing, a vital part of the game, you're not going to get far trying to use just the basic FG300 frigates um, and just the stuff that the game gives you early on. You're going to need to unlock new ships and you're going to need to make the ones you have more powerful because obviously any ship that you have in a fleet is taking up fleet command points and you want those fleet command points to really count. If you've got a fleet of unupgraded ships taking up 300 command points, I've got that same fleet fully upgraded at 300 command points. I wonder who's going to win. Anyway, folks, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this in the comment section down below. What is your favorite ship in the game so far in Infinite Lagrange? It might be a frigate, it might be a corvette, it might be a fighter, it could be a destroyer, cruiser, battle cruiser, a carrier. Let me know what your favorite ship is, and I'd love to hear. As I said, mine is definitely the Reliat and the Winged Hussar right now. Loving those ships, even though I've got cruisers and battle cruisers available to me now, I still use these ships an awful lot. Thanks for watching right the way to the end, folks. Happy sailing, and see you in Infinite Lagrange.